everyone, my name is Mingjun. I'm currently a product designer working in tech. Over the past few years, I have been giving a lot of portfolio presentation during my on-site interview with different type of company. I definitely learned a lot during this process and made tons of mistakes for my portfolio presentation. So I'm hoping that this introduction video could help you become more confident in preparing for your next product design interview. Here are the six topics I want to cover for today's video. First, what is the portfolio presentation? Second, what is the difference between our online portfolio versus portfolio presentation? What is the evaluation criteria? I will share my basic framework to structure this presentation as well as the top interview question and the common mistake. So let's get started. What is the portfolio presentation and why it is so important? So portfolio presentation is the must-have step for every product design interview. From large technology company to smaller startup, they all require a candidate to present two to three projects during 45 minutes to an hour long portfolio presentation for their own site. So who is the audience for this portfolio presentation? The answer is the entire design team from your hair manager, which is the design manager, peer designer, UX writer, UX researcher, or even sometimes the product manager and engineer will sit down and listen to your presentation. So here's come to another question. What is the difference between our online portfolio versus this portfolio presentation? The online portfolio is like a movie trailer that immediately capture the recruiter and high manager attention. And this online portfolio gives us a ticket to get into actual interview process. However, the portfolio presentation itself is the actual show time. It's the real final movie where we need to use this time to demonstrate and showcase our product design skill set. They are going to evaluate six product design skills, including intention design, visual design, product thinking, collaboration, communication, and self awareness. Here, you might be wondering about what kind of project I'm going to select and showcase? Think about this portfolio presentation is a full course of meal. You're going to have a main course, appetizer and desserts with different flavor, lengths and complexity. Typically, like for my first project, I'm going to select a big complex one to demonstrate my entire product design skill set from research, intention design, video design, to collaboration and communication. So I am the journalist and I can do everything during the product design process. For my second project, I am going to select something smaller or it will be some specific feature from a larger project. I want to use the second project as the chance to demonstrate my superpower and strength as a designer. If we are going to present the third project, this is a time to show something I found and interesting side project with using one or two slides because we don't have time at the end to show a full story. So here's coming to the most important part of this video. How do I structure my portfolio presentation and in framework? So here is uh, the overview about how I structure my entire portfolio presentation from the cover slide, agenda slide to project slide and the end of the Q&A slide. So let's talk about the first one, the cover slide. Usually like, I will put like, my name, the current roles, and interview date on this cover slide. And then it's the agenda slide. So this is a small like, slide. It looks very simple, but it's super helpful for us to set up great expectation on what we are going to talk about, what we are going to showcase in the next 50 to 55 minutes. I will have a few of my introduction slides to talk about like, who I am as a designer. And that is a perfect time for us to tell our story, to showcase our strengths. I think the key point here is to make the connection about what are the transferable skills I have already had from my past works and even education experience so I can uh, leverage all these kind of transferable skills into these current roles I'm interviewing with. Think about like, how we can make this kind of connection and trying to connect the dog between our past work experience and this 
role. And we can also make it a little bit fun and personal by talking about something outside the product design. Maybe what is your interest and what is your hobby. The majority of my portfolio presentation will be focusing on project work through. For the first project, which I mentioned earlier, will usually be the big complicated end-to-end -end project. So I will spend 20 to 25 minutes to talk about my process and the challenge I was facing. I will spend like 10 to 15 minutes to talk about my second project. And just in case for some company, they require the candidate to talk about like third projects. Usually I would choose like something very small, like my side projects and using one or two slides and talk about the third project in one minute. So I just briefly walk through what I did and what is this project is and what is the outcome. Usually like we will leave like five to 10 minutes by the end of portfolio presentation to answer any questions. And also this is a opportunity for us to ask questions to the hiring manager, to the entire hiring team as well. So please prepare the questions at the same time. So you might be curious about how I structure my project. So here I'm going to introduce the project framework, the outline I'm using to work through each of my case study. In this project workthrough, uh, I have a project overview, a project background to the end of outcome and key takeaway result. I will go into like each session and talk about the additional like detail and the information uh, we need to include for each session. So let's talk talk about the first one, the project overview. Usually in this project overview slide, make sure we will include the information such as uh, your role, the skill set, high level responsibility, company, uh, the team structure, overall time frame for this project, as well as final outcome. This is a great time for us to set clear expectation by giving this kind of high level knowledge about the project. And then going into the project background, I always talk about in a very high level, what kind of research I did uh, to help us figure out and identify the key user problems and what are these key user problems. I will talk about not only we need to address for these key user problems, but also it costs a lot of like money, like time and efforts for our business. So I introduced the business problem as well, uh, especially if this is the project from your works, we definitely have the business problem we need to focus. We also need to make sure that we talk about how did we define the success? What are the success metrics look like for this project? So here is the tip for this session. So don't spend too much time on the research. You just need to give a very high level overview about the research and focusing on what is the key user problem you identified. I want to emphasize that when we talk about the user problem and business problems, make them sounds very painful and important. So that is the reason for us to take these projects and showing why these problems are worse for us, are worse for our team to take efforts and time. So before I go into my design process, I usually will have one slide to showcase my final design with very high quality prototype. I will use in one or two sentence to briefly walk through what is the end final design look like. Going into this design process, this is the most critical piece for the entire project. I'm always using this kind of challenge driven process. In this kind of framework, by using this kind of challenge driven process, Here's a couple things we need to remember. You are the hero uh, to overcome all these different challenges uh, and help the team move forward with the process and then the good final result. So remember to talk about what you did and how you did. What is your impact look like? So focusing on your story uh, as the hero during this kind of journey. Second tip is around you show your iteration, you show a variety of the design inspiration. By showing your iterative process, uh, make sure that we always justify the design decision with rationales. Uh, so how could we justify the design decision with rationale? So here's a few of the perspective you can think about. 
Uh, the first one is definitely coming from the user research. Uh, what kind of user feedback did you receive? What kind of feedback uh, you learned from the user testing session? So all these kind of user research insight and learning could be the rationales. And not only uh, we can mention something around the user research, but also we, we need to talk about why we made this kind of decision based on some business constraint or business requirement from our PM. We might also have some technical constraint we learn from the engineer. As a product designer, we always make informed design decisions based on a different perspective and different feedbacks. How could we find the creativity within all these kind of constraints is something we need to showcase during this kind of process. Always call out these moments where you work closely with your cross-functional team, such as your product manager and engineers. You can talk about how did you address the conflict and the disagreement with your cross-functional partner during this kind of decision-making process. Because as I mentioned earlier, one of the critical skills they want to evaluate is your collaboration skill. After you talk about your process, here's the time for us to highlight the great outcome. It could be something from the business metric, business results, or it could be something from the user feedback. So the last thing I want to say, always uh, be sure to include the key takeaway sessions. Talk about like, what did you learn from product design, accessibility, internationalization, or localization, or even what did you learn from the collaboration with uh, other designer or your cross-functional team, and how and what did you learn from uh, the process? Did you make any improvements? And did you create any template uh, for the process improvements? Not only we can share this kind of learning, but also we can share the reflection from the failures or even mistakes we had during this process. So it's a time for us to showcase this kind of self-awareness as one of the most important soft skills for product designer. Uh, we can also include a few slides as the appendix. So it's a nice to have slide because we are not talking about everything during the design process. Therefore, some additional detail won't be mentioned uh, during the period's presentation. So if any question come up in a later Q&A session, we can always pull the slide from this session. So here I summarize seven the most frequently asked interview questions after you're going through your projects. So please be prepared for this following question before you're going into your next presentation. This top question uh, includes like, what would you do differently if you have more time for this project? Uh, it is a question for evaluating your self-awareness or we might have some common question around how did you work with the PM engineer, your cross-functional partner, and how did you address the conflict? Here is a summary about a couple mistakes I see a lot of designers made for their portfolio presentation. The first one is there's no portfolio presentation index and they are only using their online portfolio to present. But we made it like a product pitch. The designer only talk about what this product it is, what kind of feature we are designing for without talk about the why, without talk about the story behind the thing. We only showcase a perfect linear process there's no up and down. This is typically like what we learn from the school, the human design process. But this is not a true story during the actual working environment. There's always be like something challenging and something up and down happening along the way. Uh, and the last one, I see a lot of designer like put so much text on each slide. Therefore, the interviewer, the audience will start reading the slide while they want listening to what you are talking about. But this is the time for you to tell your story. Designing a portfolio presentation deck is not an easy task. So please practice, practice, practice a lot. Always looking for the feedback and iterate your portfolio presentation deck based on this feedback. And remember that we need to be very confident during the actual interview because no one else in this room know better about this pro design project than us. Subscribe my YouTube channel and stay tuned for my next video. Bye.